Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast, and we're talking about this is not the way it should be. Now, that's kind of a unique, different type of, of subject, but when you think about that, it, it assumes that you are addressing something that shouldn't be a certain way. You're confronting it, and that's what we want to do. When we said this is not the way it should be, and we've talked about that in our health, and we will talk about it in our relationships, but now we're talking about this is not the way it should be in our finance. So we'll focus on the financial uh, aspect of it. And when you see it, then you address it, and this is not the way it's supposed to be, is addressing something that you have found in your finances that shouldn't be like that. So on yesterday, we started this off talking about two very important scriptures concerning finance or money. And one is in Ecclesiastes 7 and 12 that says money is actually a shelter. It is a defense. And that is so true. So true. And the other scripture was Ecclesiastes 10 and 12, 10 19, I'm sorry, that says money answers everything. Now, when we says everything, it's talking about in the physical world. It'll answer those bills. It'll answer that car payment. It'll answer that phone payment. It'll answer that mortgage. It will answer that medical bill. Money answers, it says, everything. And it's in the context of understanding in this world. Now, you said, why do money have so much power? Well, it is the system God has set up. And for many of us, especially in church, we don't recognize that God set up systems, systems. There are protocols, just like in the heavenlies. There is a system to the stars. There's, there's a routine. There is a protocol between day and night. God says the sun is going to be the greater light. It's going to rule during the day. So there are protocols that God set up. God is a very organized, very structured God. He is a very, very, uh, if you would, neat, organized, structured God. We have to understand that. The whole universe is like that. So this is a system, a system that we have to understand that God put in place. Just like the sun that rise in the east, set in the west. That's what we say. And we speak like that. We understand uh, the technical part of that. But this is a system, and the system is money will answer many things in your life. And it will also be a defense, a shelter from the rain, the storm, the wind, uh, the different financial things that will come against you or needs in your life. He says money will answer it. On yesterday, we talked about God creating the monetary system. That's something that God did. That's not something we did. That's not something that we structured. That's not something that happened when America came into existence. The monetary system, just that system, was designed by God. God designed that. God did that. And he did it for a reason. He did it for a reason. And when we looked at Genesis chapter 4 and the life of Cain and Abel, when they offered an offering to the Lord, where God accepted Abel but not Cain's, then we recognize that it had to be in place for us to know what to give God. Cain, Abel gave God the first and the best. Cain brought God something. He, he, he brought something. He missed it. God is clear about that. What you brought me, I'm not going to accept it. So what that says, to, that should say to all of us, is that God just don't accept any and everything. Now, we, we, we miss that. We, we feel like you just give God whatever you want to give him. Now, this is not under the law, so you can't hide under that. This is not under the law. This is before the law. This is before Moses was in, in, even born. This is one of those principles, divine principles, that flows from, from Genesis all the way through to the book of Revelation. This is a divine principle. Because it determines the heart. 
All right, so so we talked about that on yesterday. And today I want to go a little further and talk about something that we see with a widow woman. And she is adamant. And I don't think we adamant enough when we sometimes look at our finances. I don't think we go and get the kind of help we need when we look at our finances. But I want to talk about her today. Uh, now, that's found in the book of Second Kings. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 4. And I want to start reading at verse number 1. And we'll read it for you and we'll come back and we'll discuss it. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my sons, my two sons, to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors empty vessels do not gather just a few and when you have come in you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the four ones so she went from him shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil, and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. Now, this is a very powerful story. It's a miraculous story. And Many times we preach it for the miracle that is in it just to see the way God does things, the infinite God that we serve. But there is a very important uh, monetary principle here. And this woman, she realized that she was so deep in debt and she didn't have any way to pay. But she understood that this is not the way it should be. This is not the way God designed it to be. So what does she do? She called for the prophet Elisha. Now she didn't go, to, just think about that. Because she probably didn't have good enough credit to go to First National or or First Security. She didn't have enough money to do that or cre- uh, collateral or whatever. She has nothing. She has nothing. She has no collateral. Just a little oil. But she goes to the prophet. She goes to Elijah. Now, just, 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 just think about this. She has a money problem, and she goes to the prophet. A money problem. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. Now, most of the time, we would we, we think people that had uh, physical problems, sicknesses, and, and, and so forth. Sure, you go to the man of God. She has a she has a money problem, and she goes to the man of God. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. It makes sense. God says, in all thy ways acknowledge me, and and I will give you direction. So this woman with her money problem, she goes to the prophet Elijah. I believe it's probably like the woman with the issue of blood. She spent, you know, she had used all her resources. The woman with the issue of blood had money, and she ended up spending all her money, all her money on on 
on her, on doctor's bills. And then she was broke. This woman, she has nothing but oil left. I'm sure she's probably tried something. But she realizes that the the bar the the slave master, if you will, because that's what we're gonna fig- we're gonna talk about that. Uh, the bar is really a, a slave to the lender, so the creditor is coming to take her two sons and enslave them because they got to work off the debt. You don't get chance to just say, "Well, I owe you. I don't have anything. I'll file bankruptcy," or "You got to forgive me." No, not in this day and time. Not in this day and time. So they were coming to take her two sons, to put them in slavery until they worked the debt off. But the Bible says the mother, she went to the prophet. Now she goes to the prophet and she began to tell the prophet that her husband is dead. He's dead. But he was a good man. He was a faithful man. But he had died. And what she is saying, what she is saying to Elijah is that, hey, I need some help. I need some help. I need some. I need somebody to uh, intercede for me. I'm bringing my money problem to you, Elijah. I'm gonna bring my problem to you because I know that you have connection with God, and I know God knows what it takes to fix my financial future, my financial situation. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? Most people would have never thought about bringing their financial problem to the Lord. But this woman did. Because it seemed like the the spiritual concept is this. This is not the way it should be. This is not the way it should be. That comes from the spirit. That comes from way God created us. He he made us to have dominion and to rule and, and to subdue. Not just Adam, but Adam and Eve. So this this woman, when she realized what's getting ready to happen, she goes to the man of God for a financial problem. And she says, look, and she didn't go there to borrow no, borrow no money. She went there for a solution. She said, look, hey, we in debt, and I, I need something to happen. My, my husband was faithful. He was a man of God, but he left us in debt. He's dead now. I need some help. And Elijah said to her, what do you have? What do you have in your house? What do you have? What do you have that you can bring or give to the Lord? What do you have? And and she says, I just have a little bit of uh, oil. And and what, what the word is saying to us, many times we only think that we have a small amount. But God says, hey, you have so much that you don't realize what you have. Now, I'm sure if this woman recognized what she had in her house, it would have prevented some of the sleepless nights. It would have prevented some of the things that she went through, some of the things that she took. She, she, hey, she realized, hey, I'm in trouble and I need some help. So she goes to the man of God. And I'm saying that intentionally over and over because she goes to him. He's going to give her advice. Elijah gives her advice. He said, now your need is going to be met through your house. What do you have? And she had some oil. She had some oil. And many times we're looking for God to do something miraculous, but and, and this is miraculous, but he says, I'm going to take what you have, and I'm going to use that gift, that talent. I'm going to multiply what you have, and it's going to supply your needs. Now, so this woman had to do something. That's very important. She had to do something. She just couldn't stay to say, the creditor's coming. I'm broken. Nothing I can do. They would have came and took her sons. And when they took her sons, she'd have been in more trouble than she'd been at a level of poverty and starvation. But she didn't give up. Elijah told her what to do. He told her, you got to go to work. Get as many empty pans as you can. Get all that you can. Not just a few. Get all that you can. And we don't know how many she had. We have no idea how many empty pans was full of oil. It could have been 10. It could have been 20. It could have been 100. But she went to work. Now, this is the thing we have to understand. 
It was enough for her to pay off her debt and then live and then retire on the rest of it. That, that's powerful. But she came to the spiritual advisor on what to do because I don't have any resources. I don't have enough money to pay uh, for financial counseling. All I know is I need a miracle. Brother and sister, I want you to stay tuned because we have to be like this woman. When we look at the things in our lives that not is not the way it should be, not based on the word of God, we have to confront it and we have to attack it in the name of Jesus. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you.